The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida. Tom's going to join us after the first break. We got a market pretty calm out there. Negative territory to start things off. Dow Jones negative by just 11 points, trading at 27,079. S&P's right now negative by one point, trading at 3,038. Just yesterday, S&P closing at record territory. Seems like the norm that we have the markets closing at record territory for the last how many years? But we'll see what happens. Record territory just yesterday. NASDAQ negative 36 points, trading at 82.89. We got some Google earnings last night after the bell. Alphabet, we'll get into those in a moment. Russell 2000 flat at 15.71. We have the VIX this morning, trading at 13.37. And we'll get right into a big week, of course. We have a Fed meeting starting today, a Fed decision tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern time. A cut all but assured it would be a shock to the market if we don't get a quarter basis point cut. But the real question is, what is going to be the discussion from the chairman going forward about the economy, about the possibility of future rate cuts? We'll find out tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We also get jobs data Friday, non-farm payrolls. That'll be interesting as we come into November. Pretty remarkable coming into November. Halloween, October 31st, Thursday. Everybody ready? We'll start things off. Let's jump over to the charts, jump over to the indices. We'll start it off with the Dow. A little bit of pop at the market open. We were down there at about 60 points lower than the current market at 26,980, currently sitting 27,034. NASDAQ 100, not quite the same. We're actually at lower territory lows of the session, 8,079 right now in the NASDAQ 100. S&Ps, 3,037. Made it to a pre-market low of about 3,029. We were just up there after the opening bell of 3,039. The intraday high yesterday for the futures, 3,042. We'll look for that price point throughout today. Crude oil market, talk about a pullback. You back things up to yesterday morning. Quite a market in terms of what 24 hours can do. We were up there just about to touch $57. We're now trading at $55. You actually made it to a low this morning of $54.66 in the price of December crude. Gold contract with volatility as well. Quite an acceleration for, at about 6.30 in the morning. You trade from $14.95 down to about $14.88. Gold now trading at $14.90. And the euro catching a bit of a pop with a little bit of dollar weakness. The euro trading at $1.11 on the dot. In terms of stories out there. We'll get the most current of them. Consumer confidence for October coming in at 125.9 versus 128. That number coming out at 10 a.m. Eastern time just as we came on the air. I referenced the Google number. Google last night coming out with their earnings. $10.12 per share in terms of earnings. Missing the $12.42. So profit below what the market was looking for. Otherwise, the earning report pretty much in line. Some pretty interesting graphs down here when you get into it. In terms of revenue... 40.5 billion, quite a number for 90 days as Alphabet just chugs along, versus 40.32 billion they were looking for. Traffic acquisition costs, pretty much in line, 7.49 billion versus 7.48. Paid clicks on Google properties from Q3 of 2018 to Q3 of 2019, 18%, not bad growth. Costs, though, we see this as a continuing trend. The cost per click they're getting down 2%. You look at the traffic acquisition costs, they are paying more money for that traffic. That is a trend line pointing up. You look at advertising revenue, continues to climb. For the quarter, $33.9 billion. You just go back to Q1 of 17, I mean, they're floating right at around $20 billion, right? Quite a growth, an annual growth, 17.1% for the quarter. Pretty remarkable. Other news out there, and why not? We'll pull up Google before we get away from it. Google this morning, Alphabet. Right now, down 2%, a little bit of an acceleration off the opening bell, but we spiked to 12.35 last night, right on that number. You then had the earnings call at about 5 p.m. Eastern time.
Got to love the Thinkorswim charts. Of course, they are a sponsor, but it's great. You see the earnings. You see the call. You can really see sometimes on these charts when the call really redefines the earnings. And then uh, it opened right at around 1280. You closed yesterday at about 1270. So pretty remarkable that we're now trading down $28, but a little bit of a pop from where we could have been last night. Other news out there, GM coming out with their earnings as well. Before we get into the numbers, checking out GM stock, the market liking that up almost 5%. GM trading at $38.47. Of course, GM had been dealing with a strike from September. And there we go. So GM costing about $3.8 billion. So I believe they had been looking for about $2 billion in lost vehicle production. That was the analyst estimate coming into that number. After accounting for about $900 million in interest in taxes, the strike shaved off about $2.9 billion in profit from the automaker's 2019 earnings, or $2 a share, the company said, Tuesday in releasing its third quarter earnings before markets opened. That includes $700 million in after-tax after costs, or $0.52 cents a share for the third quarter. The cost of the strike, which was higher than they expected, prompted GM to lower its earnings guidance for the year. But the market, liking what they had to say, liking that there is an actual price tag on that and that there's no more uncertainty. So you have Wall Street analysts estimated the strike was going to cost about $2 billion in lost vehicle production. And um, estimates range from about $50 million to $100 million in losses per day. So that may be moving past. Another big story we've been chatting about, Beyond Meat. How about this stock? Down about 20% today. We'll pull this up. So, of course, the plant-based burgers going public within the last year. The interesting thing about today is this is the expiration of their insider lockup. So about 75% of the shares are now available to sell, and that expires today. To pull this up, and it's not often that it's all one day that this will collapse, as in the market knows when this day is coming, folks. You're down 20%. You see the sell-off on the earnings. Conference call does nothing to assuage the fears just kind of a slow, steady decline. And we're down 20% today from where we closed. But man, oh man, you check out this daily chart. My goodness. You were at about 45 bucks. You traded up to $239. That is just in July, almost August 1st. And since then, I mean, 82, we're down almost 65% from that number, trading at $83.80. This company could be around, but the market was pricing in a valuation. Tom and I went over it many times on the program that was just uh, astronomical in the market, kind of pairing some of those gains, $83.83 for the price of Beyond Beat. Other stories out there, Pfizer coming out with their earnings, beating profits, beating profit estimates and raising their earnings forecast. So one of their products, iBrand sales, rising 25% to $1.28 billion in the quarter, ahead of the average estimate of $1.21, raising their earnings forecast to see how Pfizer is trading ahead of that today. We'll pull it up. P-F-E, Pfizer up about 3.8%. I got this on a daily chart, though. Quite a slide from $44 down to about $34 just in August. And from there, catching a bit of a pop, putting this on a closer time range. You see the earnings coming out this morning at about 7 a.m. And quite a pop, the high being 38.88, just off that price level now at 38.64. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be coming back at 10 a.m. I'll be coming back right after this break with Tom. Markets right now, right around flat. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, uh, 877-927-6648. We have the dial at three. Nasdaq's down 30. S&P's up uh, one and a half. Gold's down 670, uh, 1489. Silver up 14 cents, 1773. Notes and bonds. That's going to be the big deal tomorrow, man. Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean. Rate cut coming at us. Yeah. Well, what are they going to say about the future rate cuts, man? What and are they... then, what are you going to do? That's for right. Me? Yeah. King dollar. King dollar's down 44 ticks, 97,719. The euro's at 111. Uh, the yen is out here at 108.93, and the pound is at 128. We take a look at some of these uh, higher volume equities. I was looking. Grubhub got absolutely smoked. It's cut in half, man. Oh, boy. Oh, um, whoa. Look whoa. at that. So it's down $23, trading 34.65. Can we jump into yeah. the news? Because I'm always interested. And, you know, instantly, the funny thing is, I was just going to go to another story I see up there talking about Amazon, what they're going to focus in going after that Microsoft concert. Yeah. This is going to be probably an Amazon story as well, man. Grubhub. I don't want to compete with Uber Eats. <laughs> Look at this, man. Yeah. So Grubhub shares plummeted to the lowest level more than two years after the food and delivery company gave a fourth quarter outlook. Well what? below expectations. Look at this, yeah, man. as intensifying competition and promiscuous customers weighed on growth trends. Promiscuous. What does that mean? That means they're going to other people, man. Oh, yeah. oh, that's too so funny. That, yeah. they, that's funny how they use that. Man. I know. Well, it's quote unquote. You know, okay, um, right. analysts were extremely bearish on the results, with at least three firms lowering the ratings and others slashing their price targets. Average target currently stands at about seventy-six dollars. Down from 87. That's a far cry from, I think, where it's trading at right now, though. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. That, that, look at, let's look at this thing. That's, phew, my God, it's amazing it's actually held up that long, I guess. I agree. You know, you, you got know. DoorDash out there. You got Grubhub. Um, you're on oh, Facebook right Facebook. now. Yeah. Grubhub. No, G-R-U-B, probably. G-R-U-B. Yeah. Grub it up. There it is. Okay, so you're down twenty three dollars. Boy, this is. I mean, this is one of those deals where Amazon doesn't even need to make money in the Uber Eats spectrum. That's really worrisome when you start getting into companies that do, right? Right. They they can't they can't uh, you know subsidize 
When you're saying Amazon. Uh, uh, excuse me, Uber. Right, okay, Uber. right, exactly, right, right. That's, right. I get, you know, I no, keep going no, back and forth. I do. I meant to say Uber right, the whole time. Right, Thank right, you. Right. Um, but Uber doesn't need to make money on Uber Eats. Yeah. Right. You know, they're they, still allowed to basically get numbers, right? Yeah. Get, get you know, get Versus customers. a company like Grubhub, man. You're not yeah. going to get venture capital money for the, to the billions of dollars just to compete with Uber Eats. So this is at a high of $145 in September of 2018, so a year ago. Down to 35. That's pretty intense. It, it is intense. And man. then Beyond Me, B Y N D. Oh, boy, man. What um, did they, everybody just realize today? One more time. You got um, B Y N D. Uh, insider lockup, man. I'd be selling if I was in this company and they were giving yeah. me the, the valuation. Uh, it's a monster. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just. What? Okay. No, no, no. What did you just put that on a 15 year? Yeah. What, 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 we got I nine know, months of action here. What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> so let me, there we go. Yeah. That's the whole chart, man. That's. It is. And uh, so 87 bucks right now, the high 239.71, almost yep. a 60, 65% haircut. The inside of lockup expires today. I heard about 75% oh. of the shares are available for sale as a result of that. And just to get into, because their numbers were all right. There was no surprise in their numbers, which yeah, they, is the they, most. They had real growth, right? Yeah. So right now it's a $5.2 billion company. Yeah. All right. So you multiply 80, let's say it's at 80 bucks. You multiply it by three. There's your 240. All right. That's yeah. what it was at. So you were looking at almost a $15 billion company when it was at that peak, right? And we've done the comparison many times, man. You right. want to see their, you want to see their competitor, TSN. Tyson. Tyson. Okay. Yeah. Now they're going to be competing with Impossible too. They're going to be. Sure. Um, but now what's interesting is that Tyson's trading at 82 bucks, very similar. Tyson, only a $30 billion company. All right. Yeah. So they were only double the size of Beyond Meat. And yeah. we'll go back to Beyond because we've done it before, Revenue. but you got to keep this in mind, man. Right. It almost seems, you know, hindsight's always 2020, right? And the market. You know, you can't wait. For, you can be right, but can you be right for that long, right? As right. in, it, it made sense that you could have shorted. You almost could have made a play on the two of them, right? You could have bought Tyson. You could have shorted yes. Beyond because yes. they seem like they had to get back into some type of uh, correct right. calibration. 2019, Tyson's going to take in $42 billion, okay? Beef, chicken, prepared foods, yep. pork, the whole deal. They're taking some big money to the bottom line. And when you pull up Beyond Meat, I mean, what are they going to be at? They're going to be at, you know, $80 million. What are they going to be at? I think it's around $80 million, yeah. Yeah, 273. They were at 80 last time. Um, just staggering difference to, to only be worth well, twice. It when it's just not a random. There, Tyson was a investor and beyond. This isn't an astronomical right. comparison. You know, right. they were actually an investor. They sold their shares before they went public. Probably just because they said, we're going to get into our own business. We don't need to be supporting them in any way, right? Get yeah. out of that business. We're going to make and it they our also own. knew that was a good price. <laughs> well, they got out before the IPO, though. No, no, I, so I know that. So it's still, though, I, it went IPO at 45. It's still at 85. They missed uh No, they missed even the 240. I'm right. with you. But my take would be that, yeah, they're saying, saying that that is, was a good price. I, they're in their business, you know? So. I just don't think they wanted to support them in any way, right? Yeah. They didn't want to be an active buyer of their shares in any capacity. Because mm -hmm. why would you? You know, why would you want to be an active buyer at all? Right. Um, but man, oh man, quite a run. So Google. Yeah, you know they came out with numbers last night. Bottom line is that uh, they're spending a lot of money, but that's this is like a blip. I mean, it didn't do anything. It was no. down twenty three bucks. Yeah, you and know? I pulled it up. It was a, I think it was twelve eighteen was the low initially on the spike. Still not anything too dramatic. So you're just wild about that. The expected move was sixty dollars. There we go. So right? I got it sixty dollars because I think it was twelve set twelve. 69 or 1279 it was. at the close so it, so let's pull it, up I, yeah. I believe it was we'll pull up that thinkorswim platform and i know you were just on that td ameritrade network not yeah. bad uh 1235 okay i thought it was 1218 yeah. but you did uh that's about 65 because you closed at about 1290 okay right so yeah. you're looking at exactly uh 65 bucks off the that's high to the wild. low it is Let's pull up Apple and see what the expected move is Before tomorrow. Before, I'll pull oh. it up, right? I just wanted to show, I went over it real briefly, but yeah. they got some cool charts in here just in this article talking about like you were talking about. So they're the headline numbers, right? They miss on earnings because they're spending money. Revenue, they actually beat, I mean, just huge, man. 90 days, 40.5 billion. Yeah. It's always remarkable when they beat, it looks like negligible. That's $180 million they beat by in 90 wow. days. And acquisition costs, though. Yeah. Talk about a trend, man. They were at, you know, four to four point five to five billion maybe just yeah. two years, two and a half years ago. They're now flirting with eight billion and they have since the 
a year ago. And does acquisition cost mean getting clients like us? I believe it does. Yeah, Total okay. acquisition okay. costs. You right. know what they're spending to, to get that to get, their clients, to get those right. clients. And um, once they get them, spend the money. Look at the advertising revenue, man. Thirty-three point nine billion in Q3 versus yeah. just twenty-eight point nine a year ago. Mammoth. No, they. I'm pretty sure they were a big company a year ago, and right. somehow they grew at what do they add there? Almost five billion dollars. Two point eight nine billion would have been ten percent. You're going to like eighteen percent on a yearly basis on revenue, and they're competing with Facebook. Yeah. They're competing with Amazon coming oh, yeah. up on their For rear. Sure. Uh, sure. And there's the advertising revenue. I mentioned it at the top. They were at almost 20, 22, 25. You, you decide where that is along it. Just mammoth growth, man. Amazing. Big, big time. Yeah. What we're going to look at, what you want to pull up the expected move for? Apple. 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 Good. We'll Apple do it numbers, right when we get back. Apple's numbers tomorrow, folks. Perfect. So stay right there. Come right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 26, NASDAQ's down 29, SPs are up 3. And so Apple's coming out with their numbers tomorrow. That's okay. That's 246 right now. I think it actually hit all-time high today. Okay. Um, Pretty remarkable. I heard some Apple up like 60% year-to-date, man. And that might not even include the pop that it had from that 
Christmas Eve low, where they markets all got to pop from Christmas Eve to oh, New yeah. Year's, but year to date, just an amazing year for Apple. I think the low will pull it up afterwards, like 143, 146. Intense. It is. Um, 972, the market pricing in. One day expected move. Got to love the Thinkorswim platform. So that's about 4% or so. Yeah. 10 bucks, about 4% on that earnings number. So the market pricing in about a 4% pop either way. And, uh, Let's, let's jump back to pull up those Apple numbers to see what they're going to be coming out with because you want to talk about some big-time numbers, man. And what's going to get intriguing is that the, uh, you know, the amount of news coverage they got on this 11, the market's <coughs> going to be looking for bigger numbers than I think that they say they're going to do because at the beginning they're saying, okay, the 11 was going to be big, but all the news is like, oh, this has been real yeah, big. Yeah, so, exceeded you know, expectations, right, right? All right. So they better. They better. 63 billion. 63 billion, that's right. Top and line, bottom line, 284. You got it. And uh, remarkable, that next quarter there, they'll be that holiday season, $86 billion. Look at that. Pretty remarkable. And, um, they're still growing outside oh, of China. They are. And so they're sitting right now. When, I mean, it's amazing. We were just talking about a trillion dollar company, right? They're already at 1.1. Yeah. They're just crushing it, man. And to put it on a longer time frame chart, because I think you're right, 249.75 right around on the open. And pretty remarkable, though. Look at this sell off going on here, right? I yeah. mean, pay attention. We got earnings tomorrow. We're almost $3 right now off nothing. Right. Just a little bit of maybe right. um, the market saying, hey, we're pricing in a little bit too much exuberance right now. And so we'll back things up. So, no, so Apple actually made the low on January 3rd. Pretty remarkable that. that they were actually one of the few. Up 100 that, bucks from that. 142 on the dot, man. You're up 107 dollars. 105 now. 107 from there. And um, the pullback though, yet to yet to withstand a, a 215 to 177. That's nothing to shake your head at, no, man. That's 40 least. bucks. That's almost a 20 percent pullback. But, but man, oh man, it made it back in no time, yeah. and, and we're now up a solid 20% from that price level, man. Yeah. There's Pretty. no doubt. The high flyers are definitely hard to buy on the pullbacks. Cause, yeah. Because the pullbacks are just vicious on them. I and mean, I, just look at Amazon when they come out with the numbers. Oh, man, right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, I mean, Amazon came back up as $100, right? That one. You know, Look at that. That's a blip. It's like it didn't even happen, that right. bar. And we, we went from 1780 down to 1700 And I don't yeah. even think that includes because that's a daily Let's put this on a 15 minute. We're, we're going to see 16, 18. See yeah. what I'm saying? It, it, the daily didn't even. Hey, look at that. It's all forgotten. Bezos back oh, to yeah. the top spot, man. Yeah. Pretty remarkable. Well, what's not forgotten is the uh, Microsoft uh, contract with the Pentagon. $10 billion is easy, uh, not easy to forget, man. Right. So uh, this article, we'll talk about the headlines. So Amazon seen focusing on Trump in Pentagon contract challenge. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody paying attention. Uh, the interesting stuff in here we went over, right, yeah. is the timeline of things. We're in the timeline right now, folks. Oof. The so. Government Accountability Office rules give Amazon 10 days from the date of the contract awards. So maybe that was yesterday. Maybe that was Sunday. Maybe it was Friday, right? It was yeah. sometime because I think they said somewhere in here that their lawyers definitely weren't watching the World Series over the weekend. No. So maybe it was Friday. 10 days is all they have from the date of contract or five days from their official debriefing from the Pentagon to file a protest and pros pause the procurement. The debriefings designed to give Amazon feedback on its bid. AWS and the Defense Department didn't return messages seeking comment, of course. So such a challenge, which is all but expected, would trigger a review that the GAO must complete within 100 days and prevent the contract from taking effect in the meantime, though the Pentagon has the power to override and hold um, override the hold and proceed anyway. So two years after first outlining the project, there are signs that the Pentagon is eager to move quickly. I would expect so. And, and, it, and it had in here too, which is, is that whether Amazon won a loss, they were prepared to go to court anyway. Because this was in, has been in court for so long. So even if, even if Amazon won, they were prepared to go to court because Microsoft's going to probably take them to court. Sure. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. This is a, this is, you know, it, it's funny the, oh, I was listening to the, uh, I don't know what the largest contract Amazon has prior to this ten billion, but with Microsoft, this is five times as large as contract. The largest contract yeah. right now is two billion dollars. Okay, you know, so and and it, you know, it is uh, a ba a badge of honor. I mean, if oh, you have, sure. if you have the defense department, and they get into this, it's not supposed to be political. You know, that's right. that's the thing right. that they're probably going to argue, and uh, I would argue that it definitely was political with President Trump and his. Uh, affinity or lack thereof oh, yeah. for Amazon. Yeah. 
And uh, the argument here, I mean, they get the president basically screaming to, to high heaven um, of his need to, to kind of screw Amazon. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But president matters, man, commander in chief. We'll see if that matters he, in the courts. He can do it. He we'll can find do it. it. That's, that's right. Out, no I would doubt. say so. There's, so there's, we'll see what happens. That's, we'll see how that baby shakes out. There's yeah. No doubt about it. The, um, the XLF, so the banks, we got the Federal Reserve tomorrow, folks, 2 o'clock, a statement, 2.30 news conference, and, you know, you can, the XLF, I mean, this, this wants to basically try to hit this high. They, uh, they kicked off earnings season in high order, man. And yeah, it's, it's, it's close. We'll see if they can get 30, 32. Okay. And it goes back quite a way. Now, it's intriguing about this XLF, of course, is that the, the holding, and then when, you, when you look at the holdings, you can see... There's a couple equities that are just basically holding the whole thing up, and the biggest one is J.P. Morgan, you know, uh, meaning the uh, weighting structure. You got uh, Berkshire is 12.7 percent, J.P. is 12.3, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. Because when you go back down the like the, this list, list, you're going to see the low weightings are the laggards anyway. So watch, okay. watch this. So you get, if we look at J.P. Morgan first, J.P. <coughs> Morgan is in, in a major breakout. I mean, yes. this is at all-time highs. They're the juggernaut. In a monster way, too. I mean, it's it's getting away from the top of the breakout, which is 119. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at that thing. Definitely. You know? Now, Berkshire Hathaway um, is is close. I think it's at about 10 bucks off its high. So that's not the end of the world. Uh, 220, it's at 212. And that's been consolidating up to, yeah, 224. You know, so that's strong. Bank of America is the next one. So between them, I think at 12, 24, you get 30% of the XLF. And we take a look at this, and you're going to see the same thing, very yeah. close to its high. Now yep. watch this. We go to Goldman, which is only 2%. And, you know, Goldman has been a monster laggard. You know, on a six-month, it looks great. Well, guess what? You put it on a three-year, it's like, okay, your high yeah. is 275, and you're 218. Yeah. And you're coming right into ice here. You know, so yeah. that with that uh, November of 2018, that thing in one week it went from 222 to 198. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see where the interest rate structure is going to go because that's what the you know what, what I was going to say. We'll see where the interest rate structure goes as to where the banks goes. Banks seem to make money no matter what happens. I mean, I know they yeah. make more money if the spread is bigger, but they just have been printing money for a long period of time, man. Well. When Wells Fargo uh, just creating accounts, that's, they, that helps them, you know. But Wells Fargo's been a little bit of a whoa. They got both, there's, there's, only because they got no, caught. There's, there's no only because they got caught. So we're at 1.84 right yeah, now. Yeah, for the 10-year. You know? Yep. That's a big number, man. I mean, look at France. France is still negative. No, for sure, yeah. Germany's negative. Yeah. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 45. Nasdaq's down 17. S&Ps are up uh, five and a half. And uh, let's take a look. We got, this is a monster number. We were just looking at the amount of earnings that are still coming out in the next couple of days. Right? Yeah. So if you combine, now this includes today's numbers as well. All right. But if you just look at today's, which is October 29th, you go yeah. into tomorrow's, October 30th. You're looking at, was it 70 companies between just yesterday and today? So there's a number, 84 companies between yesterday and today. That's a lot. Out of 172. That are remaining. And again, that's out of, including the ones that came out today. Right. Um, just tons of numbers, man. And they only go to November 5th, which I believe October, excuse me, November 5th being Friday. November 1st, I'll get there. November 1st being Friday, the 5th, a week from today. Um, so who do we have after close out here? So we get a couple good ones after we'll the close. We'll pull them up. Here. We'll get back to the 1029. Yeah, Amgen, I believe. So here we go. AMD. Yeah. Yep. Amgen. Yeah. EA. Electronic some, Arts. Yep. Yeah. We're going down. Now this is only S and P 500 companies. Oh, wins tomorrow. Win is That's tomorrow. Cool. That's right. This kicks off the morning. Yeah. Uh, ADP payrolls keep going down. I know we're gonna get Yum Brands. Yum Brands. There yeah. we go. What else we got? Facebook the, after the, the bell tomorrow. GE. Oh, I can't wait to see. GE's before the open tomorrow morning. Okay, okay. cool. Um, Facebook, Facebook after the market. Of course, we said we get uh, Apple after the market. Clack. There's Apple in there. Yeah. And uh, Starbucks as well after market. That's always kind of a cool one to see how much coffee they're selling. There's going to be a big day tomorrow, folks, because what happens is that, you know, of course, we get all the earnings. We have the Fed, and then we have the... Uh, refunding that the Treasury will come out and they're pushing out 85 billion in bonds on three year, five year, and 10 year uh, notes. Okay. You know, so I suspect, you know, we'll see how much the Fed's going to pour into the market tonight, but I expect we're going to see a good number tonight, you know, because. Yeah. They don't want the repo rate. Imagine the repo rate going to 10% the day that the Fed comes out. No, with. I imagine <laughs> Chairman Powell would not like to have to answer that at the press conference it, it, at 2.30. Right, yeah, there's, 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 yes. there's, there's no doubt. So let's go take a look at these bonds. So what we had out here yesterday, folks, is this, is that both the 10 and the 30 went lower with price, but the volume died on the vine. And... It did not reject lower price, though. So when you don't reject lower price, it's like, okay, that, you know, that swing point is still a magnet. And the swing point we'll be talking about now is the September 13th swing point. Yeah. So tomorrow, you know, it looks like it's setting up that that thing's going to get tested, man. You know? Okay. So um, that's the 30-year we're looking at? The yeah, one? that's okay. the 30. And yep. so watch what happened. That 30-year has 460,000 contracts at that low. Yesterday, you know, we only did 238,000. And today it looks like we'll do about the same. Now, 
Yeah, see, I wish we got underneath it. We didn't get underneath the law of yesterday. We, we no. missed it by one tick. We got underneath it. We could have said it was a rejection of price thus far, but it isn't. If we go to the 10, you're going to see the 10, and this is really unusual that the 10, I don't believe it did even a million contracts yesterday, and that is very unusual. Yeah, I'd say this is the calm before the storm. Yes, yeah. And so on the 10, the way that's set up, yeah, it did 1.1 million yesterday. It's going into the, the 2.4. Yeah. We hit 129.01 today. Oh, that's good. That's a test of the low, at least. But guess what? It's got to get out of here to get a rejection. So. And guess what? Yeah. Get ready for tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's, there's no doubt. It's all going to be decided that's, when uh, the chairman tells the market what he's thinking about. What, what words is he going to take out or, or add to that statement? Right? I'm telling you, man. In this particular case, you get the S&P at all-time highs. You're going down a quarter percent. I mean, how can he turn around and say, okay, we're going to go down again because things are bad? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I mean, um, you know, the only, the only thing that you could throw in there, right, is in to create kind of what he's talking about is that the S&P, the price of the S&P is not always indicative of the economy by itself. Yeah. Is one thing to keep in oh, mind. Yeah. You know, yeah. you have record share buybacks not quite indicative of economic growth, right? You have the jobs number on Friday. We're now looking at 85,000 is a number that they're expecting. That is a lowering trend of jobs being added. Um, I think GDP number, they were talking about 1.6%. Well, so it, long to 3.5, yes, 4%, you know, dreams that, that some type of tax cut is just going to spur growth like and China. consumer numbers are small. This just came That's out. That's right. Yep. U.S. consumer numbers quickly fell to a four-month low. Now, what's so intriguing about this, folks, is that as, as Tommy has said, you're going through that, the, the mantra for, forever has been the market always knows the market's a forward-looking indicator. So, you know, sure. in general. Sure. You know I mean? Yeah. I, I, we'll, we'll see where this baby goes. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you got a record tax cut for corporations. That boosted their bottom line. Oh, that sure. boosted their share. Oh, um, yeah. That didn't necessarily. It had a, quite a little pop for a year to the GDP. Um, at the tune of trillions to our debt, but right. it seems like that's all gone, and the debt still exists. So. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt. We're just approaching, they're saying it's a trillion, but it's actually just under a trillion by a few hundred million or something, you know, uh, at this particular point. Meaning, For annual, for uh, what, a trillion what? Deficit this year, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, what you, what you have there is that, yeah, you know, four or five years ago, everyone was screaming and yelling about the deficit, but uh, then what ended up happening, of course, is that, uh, you know, they decided that, no, it's good to spend money. Oh, here it is. They're setting up for it right now. I love it. Mnuchin says he's open to loosening bank rules to ease repo stress. Yeah. Um, so now this is what happens here, folks, okay? So not, he's speaking that, in an I, I, interview. I, I, listen, I'm not an Elizabeth Warren deal. I think she goes too far. But she's right. And Elizabeth Warren was saying that, Hey, they're going to use this to open up those rules because this 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 rule is a dangerous rule, actually, if they open it up. Because what it is is like when when Lehman went out of business overnight, they went out of business overnight. It's financial crisis error regulations. Yeah, so you know, keep so that went, in mind. They went out of business overnight. Keep that in mind. And, and man. so it's not they, that long ago. No, we're what, barely what, ten what, years removed what, what from they, that. What they're going to say they're going to be able to open it up again. They'll be able to lend the money, and then they can't get it back. And that's yeah. exactly what happened with the Lehman deal. What ends up happening is that the banks are worried about getting the money back. I lend the money to you. You're a big player. But guess what? You were a big player until one of your clients went down, and sure. all of a sudden your money's over there. You can't get it back. So I think this is a setup because tomorrow, just what we were talking about, they, they this is a big deal on the same day. that it's the, the funding is always at the end of the month, folks. That's how this works. Um, so you, know. you got, you know, the regulations. And this is where... Man, it's only 10 years, all right? This isn't something that happened like 80 years ago, right. you know, 40 years ago, 20 years ago. It happened 10 years ago. Right. And the market's been straight up since then. You have to be aware that there's going to be downturns. These regulations are in place for downturns, right. not when you go straight up for 10 years. That's the exact situation that these are supposed to be in for when you reach that downturn. So after 2008, obliged financial institutions to hold more cash and cash-like assets as a buffer against times of stress, 
Systematically important banks, J.P. Morgan, the largest in the U.S., face year-end reviews to determine how much more common equity they must carry. Diamond has said this firm had the cash and willingness to calm repo markets when they went haywire in September, but regulations held it back. Yeah, I would be very wary of uh, the banks. They have a very biased self-interest oh, in totally. that discussion. It's huge. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow up 56, Nasdaq uh, down 19, S&P's up 7.5. And, and you got Mnuchin out here. This is a great quote, folks, okay? You got to uh, keep everything in context, man. Yeah. We pulled it up, right? Yeah. So what's he say? It's a reasonable question. Have we gone too far in the other direction in requiring the banks to maintain this excess liquidity for intraday operations? Are we being too tough on these banks? So where do you see this chat? And this is where I say, well, you know what, you know, listen, regulations, you know, we're pro-business. Everybody likes to use this socialist label, all right? Yeah. But regulations, folks, are there for a reason. The XLF from 2009 <laughs> yeah. has gone from $4 up to 29 What the Treasury Secretary is arguing is, are we being too tough on the banks that we need to loosen it up and risk another financial collapse in the process? Right. I argue no. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. next off uh, almost at all time high. Keep you keep things in context. All right? all right. We've gone up for ten straight years. You pull up the spy. All right. 
I mean, just craziness here from 67 to 303. And, and now we're going to loosen everything up and let them push the limits. OK, there is going to be a downturn eventually. And that's why you have these regulations in place to prevent the collapse of the financial institutions that we depend on. And this is going to be so intriguing what the statement's going to be, because it seems that, I mean, no one wants to let the economy go. Everyone wants it to go forward. So the question is, how does it go forward? Because we're so addicted to, to shot money. And that's right? why the Fed's supposed to right. be impartial. Right. Because politicians right. are always going to be, whether it's Democrat or Republican, right. you know, push, trying push, to push. push the limits right. to, to appease the voters, to right. appease their base, no matter what. And that's why you're supposed to have bankers in there. They're saying, hold on, we can't just open the spigots 24-7 no. because we need to right. pair things back occasionally. Right. We'll find out tomorrow, 2 o'clock. Stay right there, folks. Think of coming up next. And I'm Matt, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes. Dave Wait, we'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Go get them, folks.